Today's gospel is almost kind of like part two to last week's gospel. So let's just kind of review what we heard last week. It's the part about defiled hands. The Pharisees were upset that the disciples were eating with defiled hands. That means they had not washed them. And Jesus is quick to point out that the Pharisees are not really fully understanding what the purpose of the law was to begin with and are now kind of interpreting it differently. And so when it was originally given, the law was given, the concept of being defiled meant that you had touched something that was dead or decaying or bloody, and then you had to wash yourself before you were going to go to be in the presence of God. And so the goal was to be in the presence of God. And so they would do anything they could to become right with God, to become clean, to become pure. And so this was a daily task that they would do. All the laws were devoted to being close to the presence of God, to be in God's presence, to be in the close proximity to the divine. However, over the generations, and time has passed now, the Pharisees and all the temple leaders have been interpreting the law in different ways for different generations and, and different people that have come about and through this thing called the tradition of the elders. And one of the translations of this, I'm not translations, interpretations of the law was the concept of being defiled was that you were no longer able to go into the temple to worship God. It was changed. It wasn't about being in the presence of God. It was entering into the worship space. And so Jesus is pointing out to them that it's not what you do, in, it's not what you take in that's going to defile you. It's from here that we're defiled. It's from our human hearts that we're defiled. It's what comes out of us that's defiled, and God wants us to be in God's presence. In other words, we need to constantly be washing and being prepared to be in God's presence every single day. Now, that's important for us to understand because now we come to today's gospel, where Jesus is in this city of Tyre, and he goes into this man's house, and they're sitting down to have a meal together. He really doesn't want anybody to know he's there, but of course, we know that word spreads. And this woman hears about Jesus. And she sneaks into this house, and she lays down at the feet of Jesus. Now, this is problematic already, because clearly she's breaking and entering, right? I mean, she's, she's not invited to come into this home. And to come and to, to be in the presence of a man, if you're a woman, that wasn't customary. You needed to have an escort at the time. So she's, like, breaking cultural laws and boundaries, not to mention she is a Gentile. She is not a Jewish person. She is a Gentile. So here is this woman sneaking into the house, laying down at the feet of Jesus. And she looks up at him and she's like, my kid is so sick. Please help him. I know you can do it. Please help my child. And he looks down at this woman and he says, I'm so sorry, but it's not fair for me to take the food of these Jewish people, these children, these, this, this, the, the, the sheep, the lost sheep of Israel. It's not fair for me to take their food and give it to the dogs. Now, the word dogs is a derogatory term for Gentiles. And she looks up at Jesus and says, but even the dogs will eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. In other words, you just scrape off any blessing, just a morsel of your blessing, anything. I just want my kid healed. And it's at this point in time that something amazing happens because I really think that Jesus at this moment recognizes that what he's just said and done has defiled this woman. And she's just trying to be in the presence of God and she can't. And he recognizes this and immediately says, go, your kid is healed. Go in peace. And at this point in the gospel, we see a shift happen. Jesus has been ministering to just Jewish people prior to this. And from here on out, it opens up to Gentiles. In other words, Jesus starts to minister to all. And immediately after this, he goes into the next town and he finds somebody that is deaf and has a speech impediment. And he takes him away by himself and he heals him. He serves this man and restores him back to fullness of life. And restores him back to the presence of the divine of God. My spiritual advisor tells me all the time, serving others solves all my problems. If I'm wrestling with something, someone, something I've said, something I've done, my resentments, my remorse, uh, uh, my defilement things that I have done, go help somebody. Get out of yourself. Go serve somebody. Do something for somebody else. And find God dwelling in that space. And I got to tell you, that has been true for me every single time. 
And I'll give you an example of this. Yesterday, we went to do the Habitat for Humanity build. My wife and I went um, to go down there. Before we left, we were having a disagreement, and uh, we weren't seeing eye to eye on things. It wasn't a knockdown, drag out fight or anything like that, but we definitely were quiet on the drive to the habitat. I mean, we're dealing with, you know, our, our, our freshmen that had to go to a choir thing, and then our, our freshmen in college, and, and, and just the grieving of the, the house being a little bit different, and just having all these different emotions. And so we maybe were a little bit short with each other, um, uh, and she knows I'm saying this, so it's okay. Um, so we're driving to the build, and we get there, and we sign in, and we walk over, and there's just a slab. Nothing has been built yet. And we take the little fanny pack and put the nails in it, and we get the hammer, and we start to go and help. And they point, where do you go? What do you do? And we're just nailing boards together. And all of a sudden, I turn around, and there's a guy with a little orange badge. It's his house. He's helping to build his house, and we're working with him, and his family are bringing us water. And all of a sudden, we're, we keep going, we keep going. All of a sudden, it's around lunchtime, and we all stop, and we turn around, and there's a frame up within a couple of hours. And I'm just looking at this guy who had been on the ladder, the first to put the nails in, and he is just beaming ear to ear that his house is being built. We got in our car and drove home, and we floated. We were peaceful. We were serene. We couldn't even remember what we were so upset about. Serving others solves my problem because when I'm serving you, I'm not thinking about me. I'm thinking about your needs. I'm thinking about what you need. And that's where I find the divine dwelling is by helping you, serving you. And today we get to do that. We get to do that today. No matter where you've been, what kind of resentments, remorses, uh, uh, things that you have in your past that you wish you could fix, all the defilements that we have, and believe me, we all have them, all of that can be put to rest at this moment in time by helping others, by serving others. And today we get a chance to do that, going down to the gym and serving others for God's work our hands day. We're going to put dog food and cat food in bags to give to people that are receiving meals on wheels for their pets. And we've already clearly heard that pets are important, especially at our children's sermon. So come and be a part of that. We're going to make Christmas cards for all of our mission partners where all the money goes to those mission partners and the cheer that we bring to our family members at Christmas whenever we share this with them, we get to be of service to more. We're going to put together health kits for Lutheran World Relief. And we're going to be serving people across the globe today. We're going to put together um, um, all of the cleaning products and, and, and bathroom thing items for Town Twin Village for people that have just got their home for the first time are going to have cleaning products to help tend to it and take care of this wonderful gift that they have received. And let's not forget, we're going to be making cookies for Haven for Hope today, bagging them and putting them in, in bags of two to go down to Haven for Hope next week. Today is a day that we get to serve others. So bring your issues down to the gym and serve others. And let's see if we don't find a little peace and serenity and find God dwelling in the middle of that. But I got to tell you, I can't, um, I can't live off of yesterday's beautiful service that we did. And I'm not going to be able to survive tomorrow off of what I do today. But lucky for us, we can serve others all the time, especially at Abiding Presence. And in your pew backs are these wonderful little Seek God, Serve Others ministry interest surveys. And I think the choir, do y'all have those back there too as well? Oh, good. They have those as well. So do me a favor, pull one out and take a look at it real quick. You know what's coming. Go ahead and pull it out. Take, take one of these out and look at it. See where it says name? Put your name on it right now. <laughs> there are over 200 people that are going to be worshiping here this weekend. We should receive over 200 of these that say, I'm ready to serve others in one way or another. There are so many opportunities. We have a job fair going on right now. When you go down to the gym to do God's work, our hands, I want you to see that we are in need of welcome teams, people that are going to welcome those that are newest among us. At every new member class, people say, I felt welcome at Abiding Presence. Be a part of that first warm welcome. We have altar guild that's needed for people that can volunteer for one Sunday, one worship service a month to set the table to make sure that baptisms are ready to go, to make sure that the sanctuary lamp is lit. We have sound and video people that are needed. So that way the worship band sounds good. We can hear from the pulpit 
right? We need your help to do these things, and that way the choir can be heard as well. And also that people at home, yes, even the people at home that are worshiping at home can receive the word of God and worship alongside with us. What will be the ministry that you adopt? Where will you serve others? Where will you find God dwelling today, right now on this piece of paper? I want you to fill it out. And when you're done filling it out, you can put it in the offering plate or you can just bring it up here and set it on the altar at the end of church. You are needed to serve others. That's what we are as a church. But most importantly, when we serve others, remember that we forget about ourselves and we're just taking care of the person that's in front of us. And it's in that space where we find God dwelling, where we find the presence of God in that beautiful dance of serving others. So I invite you, I challenge you today, fill that paper out and let's be of service. Amen.